An ecosystem is the name given to all the living organisms in an area and the non-living parts of the area. So if we were to look at this aquatic ecosystem, if we were looking at the ecosystem, we need to be looking at all the living organisms, so all the different species of fish, the corals and the seaweeds and the sponges that live on the rocks. And you'd also need to look at the non-living parts of the area as well. So at an ecosystem level, we'd also be looking at the water and we'd be looking at the rocks as well. And we could be interested in the size of the rocks in that area or the temperature of the water or how salty the water is, which we call salinity. And if we're looking at the ecosystem, we'd be looking all, at all of these things, both the living parts and the non-living parts and how they interact. So if we were to look at this savanna ecosystem, again, we'd be looking at all the living parts. So all the species of animals and plants that we could see. Not only the ones that you can see with your eyes, but you'd also be interested in the ones that you can't see. For example, all the small organisms that are living in the soil. For the non-living parts, you'd also be interested in the water and you'd be interested in the rocks and the soil, perhaps the, what pH is the soil in this ecosystem? What minerals are the rocks made out of? What temperature is this water at? So all those things together you'd be looking at when you're investigating an ecosystem. You can look at a smaller level and rather than looking at all of the living and non-living parts, you could just be interested in all of the living species. So in that case, you'd be interested in looking at a community because a community is a group of different species of organisms living in an area. So when you're talking about community, you're not talking about all the non-living things like rocks and soil and water. You are instead just looking at all of the different species, which means all of the different types of animals and plants and fungi and bacteria etc that you would find within a particular area. It could be that you want to focus on a particular species in which case you might want to study a population because a population is a group of organisms of the same species. So this group of deer here you would call a population of deer because they are all the same species of deer. Within an ecosystem there are many different habitats. A habitat is where an organism lives and examples of habitats include for example a lake or a tree. Within a habitat there are many organisms that are living together which we call coexisting to make up an ecosystem. How is there enough room for them all? And how is there enough food for them all? Well, we're going to take that first question, how is there enough room for them all, as we look at a new word, which is a niche. A niche has two definitions, and we're going to start with the first one. A niche could mean a particular place in an ecosystem. So, for example, if there are many different species of organisms that are living in this tree, within this tree there will be a a number of different niches which we said were particular places where particular organisms live. For example one niche could be the roots where you might find specific bacteria. Another niche might be the bark of the tree where you would find a number of insects. And another niche might be the tree canopy where you might find different insects and birds. And you could drill down even further when you're talking about niches if you talk about the bark of the tree, you could well talk about some organisms that live on the outside of the bark, and you may also talk about other organisms that occupy niches such as small holes or small cracks in the bark. And by having many different places to live or many different niches, that's how we can support such a variety of different species. And similarly with a tree canopy, you may well have some organisms that like to live on the edges of the tree canopy and you might have other organisms who occupy a niche right in the middle of the dense foliage, therefore separating themselves and providing different places in which they can live. 
If we look at the niches within a lake, some organisms might occupy a niche at the water's edge. Others might occupy a niche in the middle of the lake. Or some organisms might occupy a niche on the lake floor. So by separating themselves out and occupying particular niches, then we've got lots of organisms coexisting together. Let's think now of the second question, how is there enough food for them all? Well again, this is to do with niche, but this is a second definition. A niche can be, as we said, a particular place where an organism lives, or it could be a particular role that an organism plays in an ecosystem. For example, of the birds that live in the tree canopy, some may eat insects, others may eat seeds and others may eat fruit. So they've got different roles in the foods that they eat. Therefore, many different species can live in this habitat because they're all occupying different niches. And not only would this be about food, but some animals do have a particular niche or particular role within an ecosystem. For example, a woodpecker's niche might be to provide holes in the trees that are used to shelter by other organisms, including birds, bats, and insects. And it could be that if we were to remove the woodpecker, then this would have a big impact on that ecosystem because it has a particular role to play. And without the woodpecker playing its role of producing lots of different holes in the trees, then that's going to affect the ability of other organisms to live in this habitat. And the niche of the tree itself could be to provide shelter and nesting material for birds. And that's the particular role that the tree plays. So without this tree, you're going to not be able to support a variety of different bird species in the ecosystem. And similarly, the organisms within the lake could occupy particular roles or particular niches. So the niche of the fish that feed on the bottom could be to, to churn the mud and release food for organisms. And without them playing this role, that would affect other species in this ecosystem. And in the lake, the niche of the pond weed will be to provide oxygen for other organisms. And again, without that, you're not going to be able to sustain a large variety of different species coexisting together. Hi guys, if you enjoyed that last video, then please click on the screen to subscribe. You can also find all my videos in one place at gccrevisionmonkey.com. If you're a teacher, check out the Key Stage 3 package at sciencesurgery.com. It contains all of the Revision Monkey videos as well as loads more Key Stage 3 resources.